Hello and welcome to this video where we will be going through the proper use of the MAG 8200. And we will be doing this with all three abrasives that the MAG 8200 can use. We will start out with the two inch wide abrasive belt as a belt grinder. Then we will move to the one inch wide grinding wheel. And lastly, the half inch wide grinding wheel for use with a curved or wavy edge mulching blade. We are now putting on a very nice quick start QR code decal that you can scan with your phone to get back to any of these videos very quickly to use for training, for training your own staff, or if you perhaps forget how to change a belt or change a wheel, you can always scan this code to get back to it. The current configuration is a two inch wide belt along with the fixed flat work table is currently installed in this MAG 8200. The first thing we want to do is check our angle. We've already lowered the contact wheel via the crank on top of the machine to be lowered to where it's almost touching the corner of the work table. We can kind of verify this very quickly with a business card. There's just enough space that a, the thickness of a business card passes through. And now we know we're at our 30 degree reference angle. The blade I'll be showing you in this demonstration is a quarter inch thick high lift blade. It's a pretty standard very long edged commercial blade. And what's very critical about use of the 8200 is that we maintain contact with our work table or blade rest. Because we reference the angle, the cutting edge angle off of the underside of the blade. So when we're on this table, it's important that we maintain downward pressure on top of the blade, not to be lifting or tilting the blade off the table because that will alter our angle. So we recommend having either three or all four of your fingers on top of the blade, whatever's comfortable, and then use your thumb to press on the thickness of the blade to be able to apply pressure and slide the blade back and forth. Now something that's nice about the two inch wide belt grinder is with that two inches being so nice and wide, it's very easy to stay on the tip and do the important first two inches of the blade without slipping off, rounding the tip, or having other, any other negative uh, aspects of that. So we'll do a little grinding here. Pay attention to where my hand is as we're moving back and forth along the cutting edge. Another point I'd like to draw your attention to is when you noticed our belt grinder moving, the wheel was turning clockwise and the sparks were moving up into the grit guard. This is an important safety feature of all magnetic sharpeners is that we grind up the cutting edge, not down the cutting edge. This has a couple advantages. One, it's a major safety advantage because the wheel of the machine is pushing the part away, pushing the blade away. It's never trying to suck it into a pinch point. That's a very dangerous condition when you have a part being sucked into a pinch point. So again, our wheel is turning clockwise. It's always pushing the part away. Another nice advantage to having the wheel going clockwise is that we are grinding up the cutting edge face rather than down. So we are not imparting all the heat into the finest point of the cutting edge by coming downward. Instead, by pushing up, we're pushing that heat up to the thicker areas of the blade rather than concentrating it on the fine cutting edge. As well as, you will also notice that generally speaking, if the blade doesn't require a lot of, let's say, remachining or very, very heavy grinding, you generally will have a less of a burr with a magnetic sharpener because again, we're turning that wheel clockwise or up the cutting edge, not driving a larger burr at the finer point of the cutting edge. Another valuable point about sharpening with our belt grinder to mention is that you'll notice that I stopped a little short on the interior of the cutting edge here. Now this area 
when the blade was manufactured and an end mill came in here and machined this metal away, it left a bit of a curve in this area. Now, this is a point that can be made for all belt grinders where you're grinding against a rubber contact wheel. Only the face of the belt will cut. You cannot, on any belt grinder driven by a contact wheel, drive this corner into the side of the rubber contact wheel. You will eventually fray the belt, you'll hit the rubber, you'll start cutting into your contact wheel and damaging the contact wheel. Generally speaking, contact wheels are not an inexpensive replacement part. They shouldn't have to be replaced as long as you don't drive the part into the contact wheel. This is a little advantage of a grinding wheel because a grinding wheel, the face of the wheel will also cut. So when you grind with a grinding wheel, you can actually bump into this corner and no harm will come to the blade or to the grinding wheel. Whereas with a belt grinder, you need to be more conscious of that. When you get near that interior corner, you cannot bump into the wheel, as well as you cannot make real drastic angles at any contact wheel on any belt grinder because it is only the face of the belt that can cut. If you start coming at extreme angles, you will cut the abrasive belt and it will fray and come apart. Now let's go ahead and put on a one inch wide grinding wheel into this same MAG 8200. first want to take pressure off the belt by raising the contact wheel. You'll see here our trim adjustment will interfere with that bolt head and that will take pressure off the abrasive belt. That slides right off. Then we use our spanner wrench to take off the contact wheel the same way you would a grinding wheel. We do need to remove the idler pulley. So then lower that back down so the tension comes off of that. Underneath here there are two springs that you simply just lift over the bolt head. And then lastly, this pull tool threads into here and allows you to pull the whole assembly out. Just snug that with the spanner wrench. Replace the front cover. We'll grab our business card again, lowering the wheel to where it's almost touching the blade rest. And we'll test there, yep. And now we're ready to grind that same straight flat cutting edge, now with a grinding wheel. All the same principles hold true. We want to stay flat on the work table and we're going to be cutting that same angle just with a different abrasive. Now for our final transition and the last abrasive we'll be using in the MAG 8200 will be the half inch wide wheel. Now you may have noticed that this work table looks a little different than the one that you had just previously seen. Off camera, I switched the flat fixed work table out for the modular work table. So currently we have the one inch wide grinding wheel along with the flat work table that is currently set to 30 degrees. With the modular work table, you can set it to 30, 35, 40, or 45 degrees. And the modular work table is necessary to do mulching blades because it has two different table inserts. We'll use our T-handle wrench here to loosen the clamp that holds the work table. And here you can see the 12 inch work table and its bottom plate that locks into the modular work table. Here is the rounded work table insert. 
that locks into the same place. And by simply tightening that vise, now the table is locked into the modular work table. And it's now easier here to see the little half moons are all the settings for different angles. So for example, if we wanted to set this machine to 35, I can actually put my T-handle wrench into that half moon. And by leaving a little bit of pressure on that, it'll stay there. Now I can torque it where it was. And then by lowering this wheel down to the edge again, now we'd be doing a 35 degree angle with this current setup. But we're gonna change this over for mulching blades. So let's start by taking this wheel off because a half inch wide grinding wheel is necessary for getting up and down the curvatures of wavy, curvy mulching blades. Take off our arbor nut, again a left handed thread. And pull out the one inch wide grinding wheel. Now we have here our half inch wide grinding wheel. The half inch wide grinding wheel requires a spacer and then the arbor nut. It's critical that you put the wheel on first, then the spacer, then the nut. If you don't do it in that order, the wheel will not be in line with the rounded work table, which is also a half inch wide. Snug that. We'll quickly adjust this back up to 30 degrees, so we'll raise the grinding wheel up a little bit. And, excuse me, go into the angle adjustment. And we'll lift that all the way up to the top and tighten, and now once we lower the wheel, we are at our 30 degrees. And just to check, we can pop our business card in there again, and it fits. We want to very simply maintain contact with the work table and draw the blade towards you, allowing all the curvatures to simply ride over that rounded table. So again, very simply, maintain contact with the underside of the blade, drawing the blade towards you. You do not need to manipulate and move all around to try and match the angle. The machine will have no choice but to cut the angle as long as you keep downward pressure and maintain contact with that rounded table. Now let's do it under power. Now by pulling the blade through, we're able to keep that same angle along the whole length of the cutting edge riding over those curvatures. Another little tip is if you want to get the nicest pointed corner on your blade, you can always do this first area with a uh, flat work table and then switch to the rounded work table to do the curvatures. And typically speaking, the interiors of the cutting edge uh, oftentimes need a little bit less sharpening than out where the tip is as the tip is doing the majority of the cutting work. Well, I certainly hope that helped clarify the proper use of the MAG 8200 in all three abrasive styles. As always, if you have any further questions on how to use the machine, give us a call at Magnematic and or visit our site at magnematic.com. And don't forget the QR code right on your machine if you have to reference back to any other videos on either how to use or service the machine. Thank you very much for watching.